What? Today, we got a pretty special thing. ViewSonic just sent me their new 27 inch VP2768A monitor. And I'm going to do an unboxing for you guys. I don't know if I've ever done an unboxing period. Uh, so this is my first one, bear with me. So I've just unboxed the new ViewSonic VP2768 2K monitor. And today I'm gonna to be giving you guys a little tutorial on how I edited and colored some of the recent Kyle visualizers. Then aside from that, I'm going to give my honest feedback on this monitor and how it compares to my beast of an iMac Pro machine over here. Is it better? Is it worse? What are the pros and cons? Let's dive into it. Recently, I just shot a bunch of uh, visualizers for Kyle's new album, of which today I'm going to show you guys um, a little edit and color tutorial on how I color my videos. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just dive right into it. So first of all, you can kind of see when I de-click the layers here, I pretty much color always inside of Adobe Premiere with an adjustment layer. And I use my adjustment layer so that my videos have an overall cohesive look and color. Here you can see this is all the raw footage shot on super eight millimeter film. That film comes in a very flat look. It's not colored whatsoever. So I apply the adjustment layer over my whole timeline and I add Lumetri color and then levels. You can see when I click those on and off what it looks like. Here's the final color. Just a very clean, crunchy film look. So if I'm diving into the Lumetri color here, um, I'm going to take you into the creative tab. That's where I always apply a LUT. And here you can see I have the Tropic Color Archive LUT set to 40%. I chose the 40% look just because I wanted something that was a little more subtle that I would dial in the levels with uh, later. But you can see when I skim through the intensity, how you can take a LUT to a more stronger uh, effect or lighten the effect. But Tropic Color Archive 40% here. Um, for this particular look um, In here. I didn't actually mess with the color wheels. I pretty much left it as is with the simple LUT from Tropic Color From here I dive into the levels. This is where I can do a lot of really cool stuff So you can see here without the levels um, the black input level set to zero. It's pretty flat um, In this case, I took it up to about 80 75% I don't know if percent is the right term as much as it is uh, the number. Then with the, the white input level, taking down that uh, a notch uh, to about 225, brightens those whites a little bit, gives it a little more pop so it doesn't feel as flat. Gamma, I took that down from 100 to about 90 to give it a little, you know, a little more dark texture, the black output. And these, these are just the bottom layers are just a little fine tuning uh, to give it a little more warmth. That gamma down at the bottom, drag it below 100 a little bit. But you can see on and off toggle, that's quite the difference from the flat look before. If I take all of those off, there's the look before. And then with my LUT and levels adjusted, there's the look after. Pretty, pretty stark difference, night and day. And then I did add a, a little border as well there. So like a little film mat border to really draw your attention in. And that's it. That's pretty much the whole color for that particular, you know, visualizer. And we did shoot eight. Here's another of which is money now. Basically the exact same thing was done here. I wanted every visualizer to have a very cohesive look. So everything across the board from, I think it was eight to nine different visualizers were all colored the exact same way. So let's get into the specs. This monitor was built for photography crisp images and accurate color with a 27 inch wq hd 2k resolution panel image quality on this monitor the vp2768 is displayed with incredible detail delivering the true to life imagery photographers desire and packing a pixel punch almost double that of the fhd resolution this monitor also holds a color gamut that aligns with the industry standards 
the VP2768 achieves 100% RGB panel color coverage to reproduce richer and more vivid colors, ensuring that the color in your photos and videos stay consistent with the industry standards. One of my favorite parts about this monitor is the ergonomic design with auto pivot. The VP2768 provides a full range of swivel, pivot, tilt, and height adjustments that allow you to find the most comfortable monitor positioning. The monitor also holds an advanced color engine processing. With an unmatched color engine that offers a palette of 4.3 trillion colors, the VP2768 provides amazingly accurate color reproduction in every photo. In terms of connectivity and daisy chaining, there's a HDMI port, USB 3.0, display port, and mini display port. Those inputs give you more flexibility when connecting the VP2768 monitor to MacBooks, iMacs, Ultrabooks, or any other tech devices. What I really liked was how easy I was able to connect my iMac to this monitor and instantly have a dual monitor system that I could drag screens between. Honestly, there's so many more little technical specs and things about this monitor, but all that you really need to know is for the amount of tech um, that you're getting in this monitor right here in this package, I don't think you can beat it for the price. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little tutorial. I just wanna to touch on the comparison of these two monitors um, and what are the, you know, I guess pros that I, I seem to really like about this monitor. So. If you don't know, this is a souped up iMac Pro. It's all built in one. It's the monitor, it's the computer. This is the computer itself. That being said, I don't think the monitor for this is the best because it's kind of this all-in-one house component thing. Computer, monitor, everything built in one. This is specifically designed to be a color pro rich monitor. So I do want to say right off the bat, I love the matte finish and look of this monitor. I'm not or didn't see a lot of, or if any reflections, this computer right here, and I won't call it a monitor because it is a computer first. Um, it's very reflective. It's made of glass. So you get a lot of reflections. It's also very bright. Um, I just don't think it's fully built and calibrated to be a monitor for photographers, filmmakers, and creatives the way that this monitor is designed. The second pro in relation to these two monitors, I love all the ways that you can adjust this monitor. You can raise it up, you can lower it, you can tilt it, you can fully rotate it this way as you bring it up. The amount of like angles, what? So I absolutely love the, the mounts and monitor, you know, orientation system that you have going on here, wherever you want to angle it and put it, you can do that. Whereas, you know, again, this computer, you can tilt it up and down and that's it. I could be working over here, drag my monitor to the right and be working over here. So certainly once I get my office fully set up because I'm still waiting on my desk to get here, that's why this space looks the way it does right now. I will be certainly using this monitor as a secondary monitor to get more work done and to accurately color and edit my videos on this monitor for sure. Big thank you to ViewSonic for sending me this monitor. If you wanna learn more about the monitor as well as the other line of prosumer uh, Color Pro monitors, I'll link that in the description below. Again, a very affordable Color Pro monitor for professional creatives, amateur creatives like you got yourselves, whoever's watching this, um, and as well as linking their other Color Pro monitors because I do have something special coming in the near future with one of their other monitors. I'm super stoked on. Um, but yeah, I'll link you guys to the whole fleet down below as well as this monitor. So if you wanna learn more about ViewSonic and the Color Pro monitors, if you wanna pick one up for your setup at home, go check out that link. All right guys, I'm Jacob Owens with the Buffner. Thanks for watching and I'm out.